today is National Deep Dish Pizza Day. How about that here in America? So exactly what kind of ingredients are you going to want on your deep dish? Well, hold on. Wait a second. What? What was that? You're sure? Here in the U.S.? Hmm. Well, it turns out today is also National Burrito Day. Hmm, so that leaves you in a quandary. What are you going to have today? Deep dish pizza or a burrito? Deep dish, burrito, deep dish, burrito. I don't know. I don't know what you're going to choose. But there is one thing I do know, and that is the Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I am back once again. I am Jeff McAleer, your host here at The Daily Dope, as well as the Grand Poobah of TheGamingGang.com. Today is Thursday, April 5th. Welcome aboard. If you have not caught the show before, settle on in. It's very, very casual. Just uh, going to cover some gaming news. I've got an RPG review today. Because it's Thursday, I like to try to cover RPGs on Thursdays as well. So, I do want to point out, the show is live. You're probably not watching it live, but some folks are. And it is live on YouTube. Used to do Twitch streaming, but I don't know. The Twitch crowd's just uh, a little odd. Especially uh, when they kind of chime in in chat. Speaking of chat, chat is available it is not on screen, but it is available on YouTube. Okay, so I've got a good amount of news today. There was some stuff popping. And uh, first off, I wanted to talk about a, a game from Z-Man Games that uh, is making a return. And they're preparing to bring back a very well-received design from Reiner Knizia. Yes, that's right. And I have the dope on... Taj Mahal. And it, I should say, it uh, should be returning uh, later this year. Anyway, travel back to India at the height of the Mughal Empire and join the Grand Mughal as he tours across the 12 provinces. Compete for the Grand Mughal's approval, the loyalty of his advisors, and the wealth of the provinces. The court is yours to influence, and the future of India is within your grasp. India has progressed and prospered, but that wealth could collapse at any moment. Instability and unrest plague the courts with petty concerns tearing the people apart. The Grand Mughal desperately seeks new leaders to carry India into a new age. Play your cards right and seize the opportunity to win the Grand Mughal's favor as he tours across the beautiful provinces of India. But beware, you aren't the only one competing to seize power. As you travel with the Grand Mughal to the many beautiful provinces of India, how many times are they going to mention beautiful provinces of India? Keep an eye on your opponents. Pick your battles carefully and strategically time your withdrawal to claim your influence of particular members of court or save your cards for future confrontations. Some provinces are richer opportunities than others with bonus tokens and desirable commodities. You don't want to be left without the means to influence the courts at a more desirable new province, which of course is a beautiful province. Strategically saving your influence cards could lead to victory in the best provinces. Wealth and power are at your fingertips if you can outmaneuver your opponents. Will you please the Grand Mogul? Taj Mahal will be for two to five players, ages 14 and up, and takes about an hour to play. The MSRP is $49.99 when it arrives in the third quarter. So I have to be honest, I have never played Taj Mahal. And uh, I don't think it was a Z-Man game. I think it was originally... 
Wasn't that a Rio Grande game, at least here in the U.S.? I thought it was maybe Rio Grande, but it it's uh, it's been out of print for quite some time. For some strange reason, I want to say it originally came out in about 2002? Maybe? Somewhere around there? So it has been out of print for quite some time. So it does look like a, a little bit of a revamp with uh, some of the components as well as the artwork for this new edition as well. Now, yesterday I had mentioned how I had received a review copy of a particular game, and I think I should probably talk about it a little bit because Ultra Pro and Stoneblade Entertainment have a brand new deck building game, Shards of Infinity, and it has arrived, and here's the dope. Harness the power. 100 years ago, the Infinity engine was shattered. Its reality-bending shards have destroyed most of the world. You and a few others know how to wield the power of the shards. The one who reunites them all will become a living god. It's up to you to gather forces, defeat your adversaries, and rebuild the Infinity Engine. Will you survive? From the creators of the award-winning Ascension deck-building game, Shards of Infinity combines an unprecedented level of strategy and customization into one small box. Win by either mastering the power of the Infinity Shard or by destroying all who oppose you. Build your armies by recruiting allies and champions from four unique factions. Launch surprise attacks on your foes by instantly deploying mercenaries. And unlock limitless power by mastering the Shards of Infinity. Shards of Infinity is for two players uh, let's see, what ages is this for on the box? I do not see an age range on this. See? <laughs> As I mentioned, I got the review copy. I'm taking a guess, probably 12 and up, maybe 14 and up, due to uh, the subject matter. I'm taking a guess, probably 12. And it will play in about 30 minutes. It is available now, as far as I understand, and it carries an MSRP of $20. Not too shabby. As I mentioned, I just got this in the mail. I'm going to crack this open on Monday. I originally was uh, going to take a look at it today, but at the last minute, I received yesterday copies of the soft cover of Mistborn, uh, the Mistborn Adventure Game RPG from, uh, from Crafty Games, and I like doing RPGs on Thursday, and I have actually never seen the physical book of the Mistborn adventure game. So I'm gonna provide a review of it because I did review the PDF about six years ago. So anyway, so Shards of Infinity, we will take a look at this on Monday. Moving right along, Asmodee Digital has announced that a very, very popular board game is going to port over to PC and mobile. That's right. Asmodee is going to be releasing, ready, wait for it, Tele Terraforming Mars. Yes, that is right. And here's the dope. Asmodee Digital, the industry leader in digital board game entertainment, Announced they are bringing Frixis Games Award, uh, I should say, yeah, I think it's, is it Frix Games? Maybe it's Frix or Fryx. I don't know, let's say Frix. Frix Games Award-winning strategy board game. How come I can't just say Stronghold Games? Terraforming Mars to Steam, Google Play, and the Apple App Store. Developed by Lucky Hammers. The digital edition of Terraforming Mars will launch into early access in May, and a full launch will happen later in Q2 of this year. That's not a lot of time to be in early access, to be very, very honest. Faithfully developed alongside the game's original creator, Jacob Frixelius. That's a guess, kids. The digital edition of Terraforming Mars is a true adaptation of the cult classic board game. Cult classic? Uh, I wouldn't say cult classic. I would say just mainstream classic. Each player competes as a powerful corporation tasked with terraforming the red planet, 
Players create oceans, plant forests, import resources from Earth, and more in an effort to make Mars habitable for human life. Mars may be an unforgiving planet, but the real enemies are the competing organizations who will stop at nothing to claim Mars for themselves by sabotaging resources, crashing asteroids into fields, and wreaking havoc on mission-critical systems. Damn you! Players can compete across several game modes, including two unique single-player modes where the player can play solo, just like the board game, or against AI-controlled opponents, pass and play local multiplayer, and online multiplayer in intense turn-based strategic gameplay. Terraforming Mars captured our imagination the moment we laid eyes on it. Not only is it the most demanded and highest rated board game since its launch in 2016, it's a far out trip to Mars, says Philippe Dow, chief marketing officer of Asmodee Digital. We're thrilled to work alongside Fricks Games in bringing their masterpiece to life for digital audiences. I do not have a specific date in May when this is going to go into early access, but I have been offered a review code, so that will be very cool, and I am certainly looking forward to checking out uh, Terraforming Mars. I'll probably go PC with that. I, Yeah, I would think PC, because a lot of times, sometimes like the Android or iOS versions of games are are a little light on some of the features. Now, I'm not saying that all three platforms won't be the same with this app, but I'm just I'm just saying it's just easier for me to, to bust stuff out and play on the PC sometimes. So that seems pretty cool. No word, as I mentioned, on when it goes into early access or what the MSRP will happen to be. All right, after being out of print for over 30 years. Yes, you heard that right. 30 years. Chaosium Publishing has released a new edition of the solo adventure for Call of Cthulhu, Alone Against the Dark. Yes, that's right. And I've got the dope. Alone Against the Dark is an adventure for one player set in the fall of 1931. Your goal is to solve strange disappearances and to forestall a calamity about to beset the world. You will journey from New York City to Greece, Egypt, Germany, and Antarctica. Beginning with the theft of a priceless relic, hey, spoilers! <laughs> Four friends are drawn one by one into a dark web of mystery and horror. As the darkness grows, only you can hold out against the dying of the light. The fate of the world is in your hands. As Louis Grunewald, a quiet linguistics professor from the Miskatonic University, you will confound the forces of darkness before time runs out. But should Professor Grunewald be eliminated for some reason, you can successfully assume the identity of a new investigator. There are four ready-made investigators provided for this purpose, enabling you to take on differing roles as circumstances change in your search for the truth. There is the aforementioned Louis Grunewald, the linguistic professor from the Miskatonic University. Yes, we already said that. Linda Lau, a story-seeking reporter for the New York Sun. Devin Wilson, a sailor on leave from the U.S. Navy. And Ernest Holt, a wealthy industrialist. This adventure is guaranteed dangerous, but no matter how skillfully you avoid death or madness, your investigators will fail if they do not prevent the turning of the world and the freeing of the city of the old ones from the ice. Spoilers! Armed with the copy of the Call of Cthulhu Keeper's Rulebook, a pencil, and some role-playing dice, you're all set for the twists and turns of this epic world-spanning adventure. So sit back, get comfy, and prepare to be alone against the dark. As I previously mentioned, this was first released over 30 years ago. And this new edition has been completely revised and updated for the seventh edition of Call of Cthulhu with new illustrations and player aids. You can score the physical 102 page soft cover for $14.95 from Chaosium, 
or the PDF from DriveThruRPG for $6.95. I have to admit, out of all of the Call of Cthulhu supplements and adventures and campaigns I owned over the years, I am almost positive I never owned Alone in the Dark. How about that? And I have pointed out before that uh, I have run Call of Cthulhu since it arrived on the scene in that small Chaosium box. Oh, I should say, shouldn't say small, but it was, it was kind of a, it wasn't a very deep box. Uh, way back in the day, what is that, 81? When that first came out. So I would be interested in taking a peek at Alone Against the Dark, because as I said, I have never played it. I have never owned it. And I think mainly the reason why I never had it was because it was a solitaire adventure. And I, I'm i not necessarily the biggest fan of a lot of create your own adventure games and things like that. Although lately, some of those app games like Steve Jackson's Sorcery have been really cool. So anyway, so moving right along to my last news piece. I did point out some huge savings that you could score on a Castles and Crusades bundle yesterday on DriveThruRPG. In fact, 80% off 15 PDFs to be exact. Well, today I stumbled across the Interface Zero Mega Bundle, which is from Gun Metal Games. And you can actually save 90% on everything which is in PDF for the role-playing game. Here's the dope on the core book. Full Metal Cyberpunk. In a not-so-distant future, the world has been ravaged by global warming, subjected to the horrors of nuclear war, and natural disaster, witnessed the collapse of the mightiest nation in the history of the world, and the rise of other nations to take its place. In East Asia, the bear and the dragon battle for control of the resource-rich continent, and an emergent AI known only as Sharon has destabilized the whole of Europe, sparking revolution and chaos not seen since the Second World War. On the North American continent, the prospect of conflict once again rears its ugly head as terrorist bombings in Atlantica bring the nation to the brink of war with the North American coalition. Is this the work of Sharon as well, or are there other forces moving behind the scenes? Only time will tell. Science has hacked the genome, unlocking the secrets of DNA to facilitate the creation of new breeds of human, genetic hybrids, human 2.0, and even simulcrum, a slave race grown in vats and sold on the open market. Cybernetic technology has reached the point where those with money and the will to do so, can become living machines. Computer science is grown by leaps and bounds as well. Dubbed Interface Zero by those who created it, the Tendril Access Processor, or TAP, downloads the global data net and hyper-reality directly into the minds of billions of users across the solar system, bringing the world to an unparalleled level of interconnectivity and danger. Malware plagues the deep, and hackers manipulate the tendril access processor, or once again, tap, to upload malicious viri, steal secrets, and even the identities of the unwary. This is the world of 2090, Ome. Let's hope you survive it. You can currently score, no joke, 37 PDFs. As I said, everything for Interface Zero, both uh, version 1 and 2.0, a retail value of $198.48 for, drum roll please, $19.95. <laughs> and that is available on DriveThruRPG. And I have to say, that is one hell of a deal. It really is. And as I tend to mention from time to time, whenever I'm talking about something that's over on DriveThruRPG, if you are going to go visit one of the DriveThru sites, please stop by thegaminggang.com beforehand, click on one of our banners, and if you happen to make a purchase, we will get a small portion of that sale, and you'd be amazed, all those little portions 
do stack up and they really do help keep the gaming gang and the daily dope around. Most months, uh, we actually earn enough to pay for the hosting of the daily of the gaming gang, I should say. And uh, we don't have cheap hosting. We're not uh, at like GoDaddy shared hosting or anything like that. So, all right. So that is it for the news today. So I am going to do a review of Mistborn, uh, the adventure game. I should say the Mistborn adventure game RPG. <laughs> in just a couple of minutes. Uh, first off, I just wanted to to mention there's no show tomorrow. Uh, if you normally watch the Daily Dope, you already know that tomorrow I will be downtown Chicago covering C2E2. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed. It's not kind of a dirt con. You know, it's it's interesting because San Diego Comic Con's always incredible. And I have heard great things about, say, like Emerald Comic Con in Seattle. And of course, uh, there's WonderCon in Anaheim. But like the Wizard World and Read Pop conventions, although New York Comic Con is supposed to be awesome. But a lot of like the Wizard World and some of the other Read Pop conventions kind of, eh, they used to be really good. Especially like Wizard World. Wizard World used to be a really cool convention, really good convention. And over the past few years, the quality of the conventions have just steadily gone down. Uh, now, I'm not talking about like all conventions everywhere. I'm just saying Wizard World and unfortunately a bit of the uh, Read Pop cons are just, just, I don't know. It's just, it's very, very strange. So I'll, I'll keep my fingers crossed. This year's a little better than last, but I don't know. I don't know. So Greg and I will be off covering that tomorrow. Anyway, uh, as mentioned on Monday, I am going to unbox Shards of Infinity. Huh, Infinity, eh? Doing a little piggybacking on the Avengers, are we, with that title? Hmm. I'm just kidding. On Tuesday, I should have a review of either of Dreams and Shadows from Greenbrier Games or uh, the Reanimator board game, which is from Dynamite Entertainment and Lynn Vander Studios, I want to say it is. I believe it's uh, Lynn Vander Studios. All right, so without further ado, I am going to review... The Mistborn Adventure Game from Crafty Games. It is written by Brandon Sanderson, Alex Flagg, Patrick Capera, and John Sneed. This originally came out in 2012, which is when I actually did <laughs> my written review. But the kind folks over at Crafty Games sent along a physical copy for me to show off. Woohoo! Should point out this soft cover does carry an MSRP of $34.95, and you can get it from Crafty Games uh, website. Or if you want to just go with a PDF, you can score that from Drive Through RPG, and you can get that for $14.95. All right, so let's kind of move on over to the other camera. So I've got the Mistborn Adventure game. I keep, I keep forgetting. It's Mistborn Adventure Game, not Mistborn the Adventure Game. So, as I pointed out, I received the soft cover from Crafty Games, as well as the Alloy of Law supplement, which uh, isn't as as long as uh, thick aren't as many pages as the core game book, but uh, I did receive this as well. I have never taken a look at this, so uh, I will actually look through this and provide a review in uh, eh, probably a couple of weeks. Probably take me a little bit of time to get through this. So the way this basically breaks down, if you are a fan of the Mistborn books, now when this first came out, there were originally, I believe there were only uh, the first three books, the first trilogy of books, when this core book came out. And this core book clocks in at almost 
600 pages. Yeah, 600 pages. So, get a pretty good deal for that $34.95 for the physical book itself. And we're going to kind of page through this a little bit. Uh, so, as I mentioned, there was only the first three books. And then Brandon Sanderson did a second trilogy, which is set later uh, in the... Uh, in the game world and that's what this supplement actually tackles as well there are a few different supplements for the uh mistborn adventure game and uh i i didn't realize there were there was a were as many as there are so i think all in all i think there's five books alongside the core book so anyway i'll put that over here so one thing to point out about this soft cover is this is pretty much the size of kind of an oversized paperback. And, you know, I honestly don't know <laughs> why they necessarily went with this size as opposed to, say, a uh, soft cover in, uh, you know, like you normally see, you know, like the larger size. I'll give you an example. I haven't shipped this out yet. So, like, Amazing Tales as a soft cover. They, I mean, this is a hard cover, but soft cover books, gaming books, role playing game books are usually about this size. So as you can see, quite a bit different in size there. And it's almost as if this was made. So, uh, I, I highly doubt if the, the thought process was, was this, but, uh, where you could be sitting there, you know, you know, you're on the train going to work or you know going to school on the bus or whatever and you could be reading the game book and everybody's just going to be thinking oh well you're just sitting there reading you know a novel right you know you never know uh so i i thought that was kind of interesting i don't think that's actually why they went with this size it was probably a budgetary something like that uh, or just simply because that you know this was kind of the layout, the way they laid out the uh, the graphics and everything for the book, just made more sense to go with this size. Can't tell you. All right. So anyway, so we'll take a look at the back here, and it says, "Gather your crew, fight the Lord Ruler, save the world." And uh, I did not actually. Oh yeah, I do. I've got my. I got my reading specs because I'm kind of far from the book <laughs> at the moment. So it says, Ash falls like rain and mist blot out the stars. Ska slaves live in squalor, languishing beneath the booted heel of an oppressive nobility. Relentless steel inquisitors hunt and slaughter all enemies of the mightiest being in the world, the Lord Ruler. A lucky few possess the amazing magical ability to tap the hidden power of metal, flaring brighter and soaring higher than all others. This is the thrilling world of Mistborn, and you're about to save it or die trying. Developed in concert with New York Times bestselling author and series creator Brandon Sanderson, the Mistborn adventure game details and expands the desperate struggle of the novels. It's your passport to experience the adventure firsthand, creating your own hero and joining a unique crew that may very well change the course of history. Your journey begins with an all-new Mistborn story from Brandon Sanderson and continues across Scadriel, uh, which is uh, the game world. Or I should say the world of the novels. <laughs> Duh. Uh, from the darkest alleys of Luthadel to the farthest reaches of the known world. Whether you're a fan of the series, a veteran gamer, or both, this is your chance to leave your mark on one of the most fascinating worlds in modern fantasy literature. Grab some dice and start scheming because your very own epic begins right here and only you know where it might lead. All right, so there we've got that. Um, so I should point out that uh, the rules themselves for Mistborn, uh, this is not a very, very heavy rule system. I know, <laughs> looking at all these pages, you would probably think, oh my gosh, this is going to be the crunchiest rule system around. It is not. Uh, it does utilize D6s, and uh, there is a dice pool mechanic involved. So it's basically you'll have so many dice to roll, and you're going to have a target number that you must 
beat in order to uh, in order to to be able to succeed. So success or failure is based on a difficulty number and a, a number of d6s. So pretty cool. <laughs> uh, I have to be the uh, first to admit that when I originally reviewed the role playing game back in 2012, I was not overly familiar with the Mistborn series. And I gotta be honest, I still haven't read the books. And I started listening to the audiobooks for Mistborn uh, back, you know, six years ago or so. And I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was the, the person who was providing the narration or or what. I just I just couldn't get into it. Because usually what I do is I'll listen to audiobooks before I go to sleep. And uh, I just, you know, I'll usually listen to an audiobook for, you know, hour, hour and a half, sometimes up to two hours before I doze off. And I just, I don't know, I just couldn't get into it. And then I read the big core book here, and there's spoilers galore in this. So by that point, I never, <laughs> never checked out the books. So, <laughs> sorry, gotta point that out. But I still really dig this RPG. So we're just gonna page through a little bit. You know what? Just in case, I'm gonna put the old reading specs back on. And uh, if uh, if you don't watch the the Daily Dope uh, often, uh, you may not have realized I had a, a heart attack on March 15th, a near fatal heart attack on March 15th, and strangely enough, my like nearsighted vision, my reading vision, I don't know if it's because of the medication that I'm taking or something. It's just not as good. It's weird. I mean, my regular vision is fine. It's just my kind of reading. Every once in a while, I used to put on my reading glasses, but now it seems like I'm constantly putting them on. Anyway, moving right along. So we got a table of contents. One thing I will point out about uh, Mistborn is there aren't a ton of images. This is not a very graphics heavy role-playing game book. So you can look at that in one of two ways. One, well, you know, there's not a, not as much, uh, you know, graphic uh, pop to it to kind of get your juices flowing. And you're like, yeah, yeah, I really want to play this game. I really want to run this game. But on the flip side, you also have to keep in mind that you are getting tons and tons of gaming material in this book. It's not a bunch of fluff. It's not a bunch of you know, because a lot of times you'll see some of these RPG books and you'll have, you'll, you'll go through four pages and it's just mainly illustrations and things like that and, and just fluff and you're really getting, you know, a few paragraphs of actual gaming info. That is not the case with this. So it does start off with a, a short story from Brandon Sanderson. So we're just going to page through that. Pretty good story. I remember it was a pretty good story. So like I said, I wasn't trying to knock <laughs> Mistborn books at all because I hadn't read them. It was just, I don't have a lot of time to sit down and read because usually when I'm doing that, I'm, I'm reading through RPG stuff or reviews. So I tend to listen to, uh, to audiobooks and I don't know, it was just something about the audiobook just didn't get me going. So we got the introduction here. Then we talk about the final empire. Talks about the world of Mistborn is Scadrial. Talks about the Lord Ruler, the Steel Ministry, the people. So you have the Ska, who are effectively the cogs in, in the machine. They are uh, kind of a step above slavery, really. And we got nobles. Then we got Terrace, Kandra, Technology, Trade, and Commerce. Now, this beginning portion here, anybody can read it. Yeah, you know, the players. The narr I believe it's a narrator. They call it a narrator in this, as far as the game master. Uh, so about uh, like a real big chunk of this book, if I remember correctly, is uh, is open to both the narrator and the players to read. It's talking about the land. I'm not going to actually flip through all of this book. We're just going to take a look at quite a bit of it. So uh, it talks about the novels, the final 
uh, Final Empire, The Well of Ascension, Cure of Ages, and then The Alloy of Law was, uh, was a fourth novel. So that was out. So that was actually out when this was originally published. Or let's see which edition this is, if, if this is still the same one. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's still a 2012 printing. One thing I should point out, now you probably didn't see it, there's a little tiny crease on the cover here. And that is through no fault of, so yeah, you probably can't even tell. You can, you can really, you can only really see it like here. You don't really see it here too much. Um, that was the reason why it, this book was sent to me. Because with that little bitty crease, Crafty Games felt, well, we can't really sell this. So, and I believe that uh, the Crafty Games is kind of making a, another push with this role-playing system. All right, so talking about the adventure game. If you're new to gaming, if you're new to Mistborn, then we've got book one, getting started. If you've never played an RPG before, I always joke around that if I were to ever write a, a role-playing game book, like a core book, you know how they're always like, what is a role-playing game? I swear, I would be like, yo, what is role-playing game? And my answer would be, the rule book you have in your hands. Moving right along. So, all right, so we've got, if you're an experienced gamer, what you need to play. Talking about your first game, there we go, the narrator. As I mentioned, I could have swore it's, uh, the GM is called the narrator. And you got everyone else. So you got the narrator <laughs> and everyone else. And then a little bit, uh, an image here. Kind of get a better look at that. And when I said this isn't overflowing with illustrations, I didn't mean that there weren't any. So, all right, so moving right along. So we've got an example character. We've got an example uh, character sheet. Now, there are, there are what's known as attributes, standings, and resiliencies. And the way this game kind of works is you can be strong in one, average in another, and, and weak in the third. And you have to actually do that. You can't have two average and a weak, or right? one strong, one, one's average, one is weak. And one of the things with Mistborn, when you're rolling up your characters, there's a lot of kind of question and answer going on in creating the crew, right? Because your characters are going to make up a crew. So of course, those who are familiar with Mistborn, both you know the stories, the the novels, are no doubt going to want to be like, oh well, I, I want to be able to practice allomancy, which is the magic which is based on these different metals. But the thing is, everybody can't play a character like that because those characters, uh, if I remember correctly, those are the Mistborn. But if you are uh, a character who can use allomancy, you're going to not be strong in the other other aspects of the character. So the whole point is, when you're rolling up your characters, you're looking at the entire crew. What is the entire crew doing? And you want to make sure that you create characters that will play off of other characters as well. So that was one thing I thought was pretty interesting as far as character creation in the Mistborn Adventure game. This is not one of those games where a player would be at home and be like, oh yeah, well, I'm gonna create my character and, and bring it with for our first adventure, you know, first game session, because you really are looking at um, trying to create a cohesive crew. All right, so we've got Beck. It's talking a little bit about the character here and the character sheet. And we've got another character, Demosi. And it, it'll, you'll have like a concept. So people who are familiar with games like Fate, Fudge, uh, kind of like a character concept. There are not character classes per se in the game. So we've got uh, Gavon, his concept, he's an inside man. Jehoi, contracted Chandra on loan. Then we've got a fugitive Mistborn got Sanya, 
con woman and rioter. <laughs> so, Sev, who's a soother's thief. So, talking about all these different kinds of characters. So, thug bodyguard. So, just giving you some examples of some of the different characters you could play. So, talking about game turns, action dice, damage, stunts, building heroes. What makes a character? So you've got physique, charm, and wits. You've got resources, influence, and spirit. And then you've got the powers, which is uh, the the various different uh, magic. Hey, Drew's popping in. Hey, I caught you live. Like those books. Didn't know there was an RPG. Yep, there is an RPG, Drew. It has been out for about six years. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh Crafty Games was kind enough to send me a copy of uh, a couple other books. And I actually did a written review of this uh, back in 2012. So no cheating, no, no stopping watching the video and reading the, the review. So anyway, because I'll get to my final score in just a minute. So anyway, so you got the powers. So you, the, mainly the powers are, are the magical powers. So I eh, better pop these back out. So, and then you've got different traits. The resiliencies, health, reputation, willpower, destiny and tragedy, secrets, building your hero. See right here, building your hero right up top says, step one, start with the crew. So as I mentioned before, when you're rolling up your characters, you want everybody to get together to roll up their characters because that is the main concept. You're, you're creating a crew, and your crew is going to have kind of a, an overall mission. Now, maybe they're looking just to get rich, or maybe they're looking to overthrow authority, or maybe just create chaos. Who knows? That's the concept you're going to come up with for your crew. So it says, start with a crew. What's your crew's common cause? What's their primary target? What's their preferred method? And then you're going to see throughout this book, one of the other things I thought was pretty interesting is Brandon Sanderson was actually an integral part of the creation of this role-playing game. So you're going to have notes from Brandon Sanderson scattered all throughout this book. So this was not a role-playing game that was just simply, uh, hey, we, we purchased a license for this IP to create a role-playing game, and then the original author of the novels had nothing to do with it. You see that a lot. So this was uh, this was very, very interesting that Brandon Sanderson was really, really involved in the creation of this. All right, so we're just gonna kind of keep moving right along here. How do, how do people describe your personality? Uh, what is your most distinctive feature? What special skills do you bring to the crew? As I had mentioned before, this is a, a lot of, you know, question and answer to really guide you in the character creation as opposed to just, oh, I'm just rolling dice. I got my three six-sided dice. Oh, look, I've got a dexterity of 15. You know, that kind of stuff. Do you have any special powers like magic or shape-shifting? Are you especially fit, smart, or charismatic? Are you well off or do you struggle to get by? So, like I said, a lot of question and answers Lots of questions and answers, I should say, to help you, to help guide you in creating your character and creating your crew. Find your strengths. Fill in the details. And then we've got a bunch of stuff, diff the different, uh, different races, and some examples of names, family names, male names, female names. Props which basically props are uh, items, items that your characters utilize. Traded backstory, optional. Improving your heroes, there we go. Talking about character advancement, rate and limits of advancement, spending advancements. Talking about different advancements that you can earn. There we go. So every time you see one of these, that's basically some notes from Brandon Sanderson about the game. So then we got the game basics. As I mentioned before, this is pretty much a uh, 
a dice pool, six-sided dice pool, where you're looking at, you'll have so many dice you'll be able to roll, and you're looking to to better. Uh, it's either matching better, or was it better? I don't know. I have to take a peek. Uh, I believe it's equal to or higher, as far as the difficulty number. When should I roll the dice? Types of rolls, challenges, contests, conflicts, the dice pools, applying your traits. So basically, if you know, if you've got something that that would help that situation, you're going to get an extra die. Is how that usually breaks down. All right. Pools above ten dice. Pools below two dice. Difficulty. Rolling the dice. What's the outcome? All right, so on and so forth. Like I said before, even though there are loads and loads of pages, what is it, 570 something? Let's see, well, those are some character sheets here at the end. Uh, 573 pages. The actual rule concepts are pretty simple. So we're talking about contests there. Describing contests. Scripting extended contests. Framing the scene, grouping extras, the conflict round. Resolving your actions, damage and defeat. Complications and conflicts. Nudges and conflicts. Uh, if I remember correctly, a nudge is um, almost, I want to say it's like, it's it's along the lines of like a, a Benny would be in um, Savage Worlds. But I th a nudge is more along, I, I believe if the, if the GM is trying to, you know, kind of, I don't want to say railroad somebody, but they're trying to kind of get to get the action going in a certain direction they would use a nudge to the players and if the player accepts that nudge then they get like a little bit of a bonus so describing a conflict i may be completely wrong because keep in mind <laughs> i did this review six years ago so i just wanted to go back through it because i had never actually seen the physical book so talking about damage talking about weapons Social conflicts, interrogation and torture, seduction and tests of will, examples play, changing the world, how standings work. Because remember, your player will have a standing in the world. You know, how does the world see them? Spirit, the power of fate. Children of the Contract. So this is, uh, I believe this chapter is devoted to the Chandra. Yep, there you go, playing a Chandra hero. Chandra powers. All right, now we go to book two. So book two is effectively, this is all about... Uh, the use of alloys, the use of metals, and uh, using magic. So the uh, the alloy mancy that I was talking about, which plays such a big role in the Mistborn novels, that's what this chapter is going to talk about. It's going to talk about each different metal and what kind of magics are involved, or what kind of effects, kind of special abilities, things like that. Uh, each of those are going to allow. So, talking about magic of the final empire. So there you go. There's the Alamancy. Gaining and improving powers, multiple powers, stunts, misting savants. I'm not even going to try to <laughs> pronounce that. For, uh, for Ruchimi? I don't know. Have no clue. So, Hemology. There we go, the metals. I was going to say, I knew there was a section here which talked about each of the metals. So, for an example, here we go, tin, 
pewter, iron, steel, copper, and all the different metals. Bronze, there's quite a few in here. Brass, I'm even skipping some. Aluminum. All right. Gold. So as you can see, there are a lot of pages devoted to the various different metals and what they can do in the uh in in you know basically in the magic that uh is built into the novels and into this system all right and then we've got book three book three is is effectively for the narrator so and of course you know players could read it but this is where really all the spoilers for the books comes in or at least the first trilogy comes into play as well as a lot of uh, tips for the narrator as far as running a game. And one thing that I had noticed, uh, both with Mistborn as well as Fantasy Craft, because I reviewed the, the core book for Fantasy Craft uh, before Mistborn. Uh, that, that's probably, that review is probably from like 2011. And I thought it was excellent. And one of the, the, the big points that I made about that book was the advice and uh, the, you know, just creating your own game advice for the GM was outstanding. And the same is true here. I felt that this was one of the, one of the big selling points of this, this game book is this last section, or I should say this third book. It's not the last section, but this third book, because there is so much good information in here just about running a game. It's very, very cool. Matt, we're gonna just kind of flip through a little bit. So behind the curtain, playing the narrator, narrating stories, exploring the novels. Yeah, there we go. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. <laughs> Creating your own stories. Devising a plan, adding twists, add secrets, using allies and enemies in the game. Like I said, there's a lot of really, really cool info in here. Then running the game. Key to collaboration, helping heroes grow. I, and of course, I'm skipping right through a lot of this. But, you know, for an example, when do you roll the dice? You know, for people who are brand new to role playing games, especially brand new to, to uh, brand new to running an RPG, a lot of times they, they lean on the dice as a crutch a lot more than they should. Uh, my, my approach to any kind of role-playing game is you want to kind of leave rolling dice as a last resort. But, uh, well, of course, unless you're you know, running like Pathfinder or D&D &D when everything is basically dice rolls. But, uh, so we've got that information there, using complications, secrets, destiny and tragedy, Talking about some some uh, some points to guide the narrator as far as that. Tying it all together. Heroes of the Mistborn trilogy. So each of the characters are going to get their own uh, write-ups and get statted out. So we'll skip on through that. Rogues Gallery. So we got all the enemies. Uh, I don't, I don't recall there being like a bunch of creatures. It's mainly, uh, mainly humans. I don't remember there really being like, uh, kind of like a bestiary here. All right. Talking about the Steel Ministry. Kloss. There we go. Now we got some animals. Yep. As I mentioned, not much of a bestiary. It's like two pages then you got creating your own characters kind of just a real quick kind of rundown here so this is, all, this is almost like kind of like uh not necessarily an index but kind of like a quick guide here at the end and then we've got the appendix which has got a basic rule summary which is all of what eight pages six pages maybe pretty much summing everything up and then it finishes off with some character sheets. And that is what we find with Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn adventure game from 
crafty games. So anyway, popping back over here. So when I originally did the review for for Mistborn, I really, really dug the book. Now, it, it, okay, it's not perfect, okay? So one of the things that I recall was it was a bit wordy, um, kind of rambled on a little bit in places. Uh, and I mean, not that that was a bad thing, but I, I thought it could have been a little tighter as far as, cause you know, keep in mind, that's you're looking at 570 pages there. But, and I'm not saying that it, it was just off on a tangent. I'm not, I'm, I don't mean that, but it just seemed to be uh, just a little, little too long winded in, in places. Or I was like, okay, I get it. You're kind of, you know, just beating a dead horse here. But like I said, that wasn't necessarily a bad thing. So that was, that was one kind of little tiny ding. And then the other was, uh, basically, it doesn't have a lot of illustrations. And I personally, now granted, of course, it's black and white, right? It is not a full color book. So you can kind of get away with not having as much illustration or your graphic pop to the core book. But other than that, I thought it was excellent. I not even being familiar with the world of Mistborn at the time, and I'm still not overly familiar with the book series. Uh, okay, I know what happens, <laughs> but I mean, that's about it. I thought this was a great introduction, uh, especially for someone who who digs the Mistborn series, which is now, I think it's seven books, I think. It's either six or seven, maybe it's six. Because I know it is two trilogies. I thought there was one standalone maybe like a is it a prequel or something maybe i'm i'm thinking wrong but uh i thought the the rules worked very very nicely it was very cool to see that crafty games created their own system their own game system for this because fantasy craft was open game license based on i want to say 3.5 so and it, it was really cool but of course it was open gaming license. This is not. This is from scratch. This is a new system built from scratch. And it is light, but it's not just complete fluff. Uh, there's, there's enough bite to it that, uh, that you feel that, you know, it's, it's not something along the lines of uh, <laughs> fiasco or something like that, right? I mean, there, there is structure to the game systems itself. So dug that. And once again, as I mentioned while we were taking a peek through, I thought the presentation to introduce players to the game world, if they're not familiar with Mistborn, very, very well done. And the um, just the, the tips and information for the narrator to ease them into the game, into running the game, advice, I thought was extremely well done. I thought that was top notch. It was excellent. And I mean, it was even, I'm sitting there reading it back in the day, not really knowing much about Mistborn. And I'm kind of like, yeah, I, I could, I could see running this. Yeah. That's saying a lot. <laughs> I mean, for something I am completely unaware of at the time when I pick up the, the book and start reading it for me to sit there and be like, yeah, I can see myself running this. That is really saying something. So in the end, I give Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn Adventure Game a very, very well-deserved 9 out of 10. It is that good. It is jam-packed. If you are a fan of uh, Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn novels, you really owe it to yourself. And of course, if you like role-playing games, you owe it to yourself to have this in your collection. There is absolutely no doubt about it. Uh, it is that good. And another cool part of it is the section about running games, Mistborn games. There's a lot of information that you can kind of uh, cannibalize for your own role-playing games. Doesn't have to be Mistborn related. Lots of, lots of good info, lots of good tips involved in that as well. So as I mentioned, I will actually uh, be sitting down reading this. <laughs> No audiobook for this. I will be checking this out uh, and I will have a review 
of alloy of law, isn't that it, right? Yep, alloy of law, which is the campaign setting for the second trilogy of books. I uh, should have a review of that within the next couple of weeks. All right, so there you have it. As mentioned before, on Monday, I will be doing an unboxing of Shards of Infinity, the deck building game, the new deck building game from Ultra Pro and Stoneblade Entertainment. And there's no show tomorrow. So because I am covering C2E2, downtown Chicago at uh, McCormick Place. So when you're not watching The Daily Dope, be sure to go visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. Come on, by now you know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer. Here's hoping you have a wonderful weekend. I will be back on Monday. And until then, thank you so much for watching.